It's nice to have you here today on our channel, Luxury Untold. Welcome folks, because we're going to talk about a topic that we thought was fascinating to know about. So, subscribe to our channel now and smash that bell icon. Don't forget to follow our Instagram and our social media platforms. As you are all aware, Prada is one of the most well-known high-end brands in the world today. Handbags with classical designs and construction. Prada is a well-known and well-respected name among fashionistas and style connoisseurs. Prada is adored by young and old, men and women all around the world. The logo of Prada is also the talk of the town why because Prada's emblem pays tribute to the company's incredible history as a leather manufacturer to the Italian royal household. Its more simplified and updated version upholds the business reputation for elegance, simplicity, and quality. The brand's developers have worked hard to stay innovative while keeping a traditional, elegant aesthetic. The House of Prada has demonstrated its durability, and the Prada name will continue to be sought for many years to come. The following is a brief history of Prada and its founder so let's move into it. Mario Prada and his brother Martino founded Prada in 1913, the first Prada store was established in Milan's famed Galleria Vittorio Emanuele II. Mario Prada, born in Milan, was the creator and first designer of the fashion house Prada, which specializes in a wide range of high-end items. It began as a leather goods store called Fratelli Prada, which translates as Prada Brothers in Italian. Handbags, animal goods, and steamer trunks were among the items marketed by Fratelli Prada. The majority of these things were brought in from England. Mario Prada did not want any of his female relatives to work for him at the time why? Because he thought that it was the responsibility of males to provide for their families. Prada was given the distinct honor of supplying the Italian royal house because of the quality of goods, which was a remarkable milestone for such a small business. Prada was allowed a unique license to utilize the House of Savoy coat of arms and not motif on their badge. Prada's status as a brand for the elite and reputation was created as a result of this, and it has maintained so to this day. The royal emblem is still on the company's logo today. Prada's ties to the nobility and European elite aided its growth into a global brand. It had gone beyond Italy by 1950. Prada has also continued to expand its product line. The debut of a new form of nylon fabric, that's never been previously encountered, was a highlight of this early period. This novel cloth-inspired bag design trends and is still in use today. The mind-catching thing about the Prada family is that Mario Prada didn't want to involve any female of the family in his business but here comes the turning point, Luisa Prada his daughter has played a very major role in his business though he had sons. Mario Prada managed the company till his death in 1958, when his daughter, Luisa Prada, took over. Mario believed that women were incapable of operating a business effectively, and he wanted his boys to succeed him. However, none of his sons were interested in running the company, so Luisa stepped over. Luisa's steady hand kept the company afloat as it turned away from tailoring and toured ocean liners and airline travel. They continued to make expensive bags and other fashion items, with yearly sales of $450,000 when Luisa was willing to take over the firm. Luisa, the same as her father prior to her, handed control over to her daughter. She was the company's president for almost 20 years before handing it over to her daughter Maya Prada in 1978. Maria Bianchi was born in May 1949, she went on to acquire a doctorate in political science from the Milan University and, at the age of 21, joined the family company. She would take over Prada eight years later and alter her surname to Maya Prada. The business would burst onto the fashion landscape under her leadership. Maya Prada was pivotal in the establishment of Prada. She is, however, notoriously tough to keep up with as a designer. This ambiguity keeps the fashion world guessing as to what she'll do next. In 1996, for example, she took the fashion industry by surprise. The company had dwindled under Luisa's supervision, and by 1978, there was only one store open. Around half a million dollars was raised from the sales. Maiochia has hired Patrizio Bertelli as Prada's business manager. Maiochia was able to concentrate on the inventive side of the business as a result. In 1979, the company confirmed footwear to their increasing product portfolio. Its debut women's shoe line was positively appreciated. The company grew and became more well-known. Prada expanded its direct-owned retail network into new markets throughout the world. The establishments were recognized for their sleek style as well as the distinctive green color of their exterior. The color was dubbed Prada Green. In Milan's Via della Spiga, the first green store opened. 
Following it, there were boutiques in Tokyo, Madrid, Paris, and London. So we are going to discuss the brief history of Prada so don't go anywhere and stay with us not to miss anything out on it. Prada introduced its first line of totes and backpacks in 1979. Initially, there was little knowledge of these new commodities among the general public. When these things were advertised, however, they became a commercial success. Maiuccia Bertelli married Patrizio in 1987, and the couple has two sons the duo is passionate about modern art, and they put effort together to broaden their business. Maiuccia and Patrizio recognized the value of branding and desired to extend their company into the premium market. Prada built its second boutique in the Galleria Vittorio Emanuele in 1983. Under Maiuccia and Patrizio's leadership, they charted a course that led to Prada one of the world's most prestigious fashion firms. With the development in mind, they expanded their product line to include footwear in 1979, followed by women's wear and a catwalk debut in the 1980s. Prada was building a name for itself with its low waistlines, elegant lines, and textiles. In 1983, the company launched an aggressive expansion plan that included Madrid, Tokyo, Paris, London, and New York. In 1985, she also created a line of designer handbags. These bags were a commercial success because they combined durability with stylishness. They were also the first things to feature Prada's iconic triangular logo, which would later become recognizable. These bags were popular among the fashion elite, and it was usual to see celebrities carrying them. Prada's best-selling item to date is the handbag, which generates 60% of the total profits. Maiuccia Prada and Patrizio Bertelli's effort to grow business is commendable and if you're telling the history of Prada you cannot let your eyes off to them. Maiuccia Prada and Patrizio Bertelli were pushed in new directions by the global success of the Prada brand. In the late 1980s, a women's wear line was launched. Prada exhibited its first collection on the Milan catwalks. In 1989, Prada debuted a women's apparel line. It was immediate popularity with the audience, who admired the clothing line's lowered waistlines and tight belts. Prada made the deliberate decision not to have a conspicuous brand mark like competitor Louis Vuitton. By the early 1990s, Prada had transformed into one of the most desired labels in the fashion industry. Prada began producing men's clothing in 1994, and in 1996, it opened its famous and finest shop in Manhattan, New York. Prada moved into other nations and became immensely popular in Europe, where 20 stores were opened. Prada introduced the Miu Miu brand in 1992, named after Maiuccia's name. This was a budget-friendly range aimed at younger people. It featured daring but refined fashion that drew in a large number of new customers and increased income for the company. The fashion business quickly followed with a men's ready-to-wear and footwear collection. This series was first shown in 1993 in Milan at Prada's debut male runway presentation. Maiuccia and Patrizio will continue to lead Prada in 2020. R.A.F. Simmons, one of the best designers, was chosen as co-creative director. If the third wave is the make-or-break generation for any family firm, the Prada empire is headed in a clear direction. Maiuccia Prada turned her grandfather's 1919 business into a global fashion icon with sales of $3.38 billion in 2016. Even maybe Mario personally would have to agree that women do have a role in the family business. In the end, I would like to recall what Prada thinks like. Prada thinks, I never needed to feel so immersed in my career, at first, I wanted to remain at a safe distance. I didn't like the concept of getting involved in politics. I didn't like the thought of wearing clothes. But, as I became more aware of how significant fashion might be, I became less critical. Prada is noted for its innovative designs, which make it an innovator. It has also reintroduced several classic designs to the mainstream. Despite their modest appearance, the Prada nylon bags have been a huge commercial success. Thank you for staying with us and viewing this video, I hope you enjoyed it and if you found it useful, please like it and subscribe to our channel, if you want to be notified of future videos, simply click the bell icon after subscribing. Don't forget to follow our Instagram and our social media platforms.